Obtaining a presidential pardon from Hayes for the editor of The Truth Seeker, however, would prove more complicated and would cause a dilemma for the eminent attorney Robert Ingersoll. A devoted family man, Ingersoll did not wish to be associated in any way with free love and obscenity. Press reports of Bennett's arrests and conviction only described Cupid's yokes as obscene and indecent and not as merely a wordy, sociological polemic advocating Ezra Haywood's libertarian views on marriage, birth control, and the Comstock Law. And since it was officially declared obscene by the U.S. Post Office, the Society for the Suppression of Vice, judges and juries in courts of law, it is easy to imagine that in prudish and overwhelmingly Christian 19th century America, a book called Cupid's Yokes was likely filled with lewd language and or pornographic images. In the puritanical 1870s, when a woman's exposed ankle was considered risque, it's easy to see how an elderly atheistic publisher and repeat offender of obscenity laws could be viewed as a very dirty old man. Ingersoll was in a difficult position. Although he campaigned for President Hayes, his fellow Republican, he neither liked nor respected him. But he firmly believed in freedom of speech and that Bennett had not violated any law, was wrongly convicted, and too old to be sent to the penitentiary. And he despised Anthony Comstock. From the bottom of my heart, I despise the publishers of obscene literature. Below them there is no depth of filth, and I also despise those who under the pretense of suppressing obscene literature, endeavor to prevent honest and pure men from writing and publishing honest and pure thoughts. Robert Ingersoll. Robert Ingersoll lobbied hard for a pardon and to keep Bennett from being taken to the Albany Penitentiary. He went to the White House to inform the president that Cupid's Yokes was not obscene, ubiquitous, and sold at countless bookstores. After one of his meetings with Hayes, he wrote to Bennett and expressed his frustration. A great many ladies have written to Mrs. Hayes, setting forth that you are an extremely bad man and begging that you be allowed to go to the penitentiary. I had no idea hardly of the bigotry of this country until I read some of these letters. Robert Ingersoll. 